thanks everyone for taking the time to jump on today's call about how to develop players and teams through match analysis. Um, we're very fortunate to have Anadi Taylor uh, present today. I met Anadi, what we probably started talking about a year ago about match analysis. And uh, so we've, uh, we've done quite a bit of work together and um, I can say that I, I enjoy this, the, the, the software package that uh, we're gonna talk about today and also the benefits of player analysis. So without any further ado, um, also, if you guys, if you have any questions, if you want to type them into the chat, I'll try to monitor that for you, Anadi. Um, Thank you. Or if at any point, if you want to unmute yourself and, and speak up, you're more than welcome. But again, thanks everyone and welcome Anadi all the way from England. Thank you very much, and uh, and uh, thank you everybody for attending. And of course, Chris, thank you very much for um, setting this up. It's um, uh, great to uh, to be here presenting. Um, as Chris has already said, my name is Anadi, and I am the founder of Vice Sports Analysis. And we've been providing um, analysis uh, tools for around about six or seven years now to um, to anywhere from private schools, colleges, universities. Um, all the way up to teams, clubs, and associations. So, um, so it's really great to be able to talk to you guys about using analysis to improve your, your team and your club performance. So I thought before we kind of dive in, and, and what we'll do with this is we'll make it a kind of uh, a, a demonstration thing. So as I'm talking, I will talk you through and show you in iSports Analysis how we use analysis to... Um, to you know, improve team and player uh, performance. Um, but um, just so that we're all on the same page, I thought really the, the very first question that um, is worth asking is why analyze a match? What would be the reason to actually take the time out to analyze a match? And the answer to that is quite simply to generate facts around our team performance, to generate facts that we can use to make decisions about how we improve our team and our player uh, performance. And really what we're looking at when we analyze is not creating huge amounts of data, but creating data that is useful and that can answer questions. Really that is the ultimate point behind uh, analysis, whether that's individual player analysis, or whether that is um, uh, overall match analysis. So what I'd like to do is begin to, but by demonstrating how we analyze a match. And so what I'll do is share my screen. And <clears throat> as you can see here, we are looking at um, isportsanalysis.com. So with isportsanalysis.com, we actually have two kind of sign-in areas. We've got the sign-in area that we call the channel sign-in, which is where players and coaches can sign in to engage with content that's been uploaded and games that have been analyzed. And we've also got down here an administration sign-in, which is where we actually um, upload those games and do our main analysis. Okay, so once we've signed in, very importantly, the first page that we're presented with is the page that allows us to upload our game. So with regards to recording your game or filming your games, um, we do have a, a, a best practice PDF, which we're very happy to share with you. Um, so if anybody wants that, just drop me an email and I'm, I'm quite happy to share that uh, because, you know, when you're analyzing a videoed game, you really want a kind of bird's eye view of that game and you don't want people walking in front of the camera, so on and so forth. Once you've, once you've recorded your game um, and it doesn't really matter what you record your game on, whether it's a, anything from VO or Pixelot cameras to uh, uh, webcams to uh, tablets or even mobile phones. Once you've recorded your game, you quite simply grab it and drop it in the upload area. And as you can see, 
the game starts to upload. I shall put a pause on that because I don't really want to upload this game. I just want to demonstrate very, very quickly that you can film your game and you can upload your game to iSports Analysis. Just before we move away from this particular page, this upload process is very similar to the upload process that you'd get with um, YouTube, for example, where you upload your video and that video gets converted into all sorts of different formats that then play on all of the different devices, whether it's an Apple or it's a um, Windows machine or whether it's a tablet or an iOS device, um, the videos will always play. So having uploaded our um, match video, we move on to the exciting part, which is to actually analyze our game. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select a game that's already been analyzed and I'm going to update the analysis on this because obviously we could spend an hour or an hour and a half going through actually analyzing a game. So I shall select this game. And as we can see here, we have our video. So this could be the video that we uploaded previously. We have our video of our game. And then we have what we call our code window. So really a code window is made up of the, what we call the performance indicators that we want to measure within a game. So basically we have a series of buttons here that allow us to mark events as they happen in a game. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna zoom in here a little bit so we can have a look at some of these. So if, for example, we take home shot at goal, we have various outcomes for that home shot at goal. So if I was to click home shot at goal, I would then be able to select whether that home shot at goal was on target, blocked or off target. Um, just as a quick definition, the home shot at goal in our code window would be defined as an action and then on target, off target and blocked would be described as tags. That might be a little bit important a little bit later on, but if we continue with the code window for now, other KPIs that we might want to uh, monitor are um, home and opposition yellow card, home and opposition red card, and I think if we just look at one more example, we can, we can monitor things like home and opposition regains one. So what we've done here is we've split the pitch into three rows and three columns so that when we're looking at either of these regains, regain one, regains one, we can define where on the pitch that happened. So that might be important further down the line <clears throat> to look at trends within our team as to why is it when we always get to a certain point, say, for example, in the attacking third, we lose the ball. That, that's just one example. There are obviously many. The point I really want to make here is that we have our code window and our code window is made up of buttons that represent events that happen in our game. And if we then scroll down, what we're looking at here is a timeline of those events. And this timeline is what is used to generate stats, which we will look at in just a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a very quick example of this. So I'm going to come into six seconds. I know that the um, home kickoff is about to happen. So there's the home kickoff. So I click the home kickoff button. This button has what we call a lead in and a lead out time. So we can see a certain number of seconds before and a certain number of seconds after that home kickoff. But what's important really is that we can see an instance has been added to our timeline that represents where that home kickoff happened. So what that means is that as our video of our game is playing, we use this code window to mark events that have happened in our game as they happen. So before we move on from this particular uh, aspect of iSports analysis, which is the coding aspect, does anybody have any uh, questions? No, that's great, absolutely fantastic. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to sign out of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in as if I was a coach or a player that now wants to engage with that content. So as I've signed in, as I say, as a coach or a player, I'm now given um, access to all of the videos that I have permission to watch and if they've been analyzed to engage with that analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this game here, which is a Crystal Palace uh, women's team. And if we scroll down, we can see the stats that have been produced from the coding that we've just done. So these first four blocks really just give us an idea of what happened in the game. So the obvious one is the score, home team one, opposition team four. Um, and obviously I'm not, I don't need to go through all of these different metrics, but you know, we've got home and opposition possession, penalties, et cetera, et cetera. One of the nice things about these stats is that once the game has been analyzed, these stats are always associated to that game. These stats are also accessible by all of your coaches and all of your players on any device and from anywhere in the world. Obviously, providing they have internet, which you know, generally people do these days. But um, these stats are always there. And that means not only that your coaches and players can sign in and um, fully engage with these stats. It also means these stats are up there for, you know, looking back on. So, Nadi, uh, Fernando has got his hand up because he had a question he'd like to ask. Fantastic. Fernando, if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask, that would be great. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just had a question. Some of the, the cameras, like the VO, they have their own stats. When you upload that video, will the tr those stats be transferred as well, like the possession and all that? Uh, no, um, they won't. Um, there are ways of exporting stats from different um, analysis software. I'm not actually sure if you can export the stats from VO, but um, uh, you can definitely use the VO videos in iSports analysis as you can with Pixel Art, and there are various other uh, camera systems that, that do the, the, the kind of automatic tracking of the game. Um, I, I, I'm not so sure about taking the stats from VO and bringing that into iSports analysis. What I do understand is that the stats that are produced by VO are very, very basic. That's that's mm -hmm. absolutely great, and and you know they do it very well. But if you want to start drilling down into those stats, it's limited. So Fernando, does that answer your question? Uh, half of it. The other half is um, you mentioned the stats are on iSport are gathered by. Uh, the tags that we use, um, how is possession uh, identified? Do we have to tag every single possession or how does that work? Okay, so um, within the code window, actually you'd have uh, a home possession and an opposition possession um, kind of action. And they would, be, they would be linked in such a way that only one of those actions could be activated at any given time. Now, the thing is with our code windows is that if you click opposition regain one, that would activate the opposition possession and deactivate the home possession. So you don't always have to um, deactivate home possession, activate opposition possession. You know, you can set up what we call macros of events that are obvious. So to come back to that same example, if you click opposition regains one, that can activate opposition possession and deactivate um, home possession. So you're not always having to worry about the, uh, the uh, yeah, which of those actions, home possession or opposition possession are, are activated. Does, does that make sense? It, uh, 100%, thank you very much for that. Much oh, you're very welcome. You're very, very welcome. Um, so the idea behind these stats is that not only do you get a very good overview of the game, you can also start drilling down into 
you know, trends and you can start drilling down into possible areas of improvement and also possible areas of strength. So obviously there are as many ways of interpreting this data as there are coaches, I think. Um, but just as a kind of example here, if we look at the home team, we're looking at attacking third entries to shots and that's, you know, 63%. Shots to goal is 8%. Attacking third entries to goal is 5.26%. If we look at the opposition, um, they're attacking third entry to shots is nearly 53%. Their opposition, the opposition shots to goal is 22.2%. Um, and the opposition attacking third entries to goals is 11%. So that's over double. Uh, what the home um, attacking third entries to goal were. And if we look at the score, that's obviously reflected. So obviously, from a coaching perspective, you know, that speaks volumes. You know, you can start drilling down into that data and start looking at, okay, why, why did all this happen? How do, what is the question that we need to ask up from this that can be answered by this data, basically. And obviously it's beyond the scope of this particular uh, webinar to, to, to really drill down into that data, because like I say, there are so many ways of interpreting this data that you know um, we could spend hours on it. But the idea is with this, that we can use this data and we can use this data over time to look at one, where we need to improve, two, is, the training that we've put in place to help improve, is it actually working? And so it, this, this, this data allows you uh, a kind of ongoing journey, an ongoing kind of unfolding um, based on your team performance. And last but not least, we, we said when we looked at our code window that we could break down the pitch into three columns and three rows and look at where our team won the ball and where our team lost the ball. And once again, you know, you could, you could spend hours on these metrics, really drilling down into the whys and the wherefores, which we're not gonna do here, but just to say that this data allows for the analysis of team performance. And from that analysis, we can start looking at aspects of our team <clears throat> where they need to improve, where they have strengths actually. And we can start looking at trends because if we look at this data over time, we can start seeing patterns that, um, that we can unfold and that we can work on. And sometimes those patterns are really good. You know, we can say, oh, wow, that, there's a pattern there. If we actually improve on that pattern, we'd score more goals or, you know, patterns in the negative were, might, might well be patterns that need working on to actually eradicate them turn those weaknesses into strengths. Um, does that make sense? And are there any questions on that? Uh, me again, yeah. Fernando, <laughs> ask away. Um, so can we see some of these stats? Um, like for example, shots on goal, where or we can see it over time, like you're mentioning, or do we have to go into every single game and say, okay, this game we had you know, six shots on goal, next game, or can we see it, okay, you know, there's 10 shots on goal this game and so forth. Okay, so that is a really good question. So what we do is uh, in the administration dashboard, uh, what you can do is you can actually, uh, you can export these stats in, a, in an Excel document, which means you're not having to kind of go backwards and forwards all the time. You know, with every game that's played, you can export these stats and you can start building up uh, spreadsheets um, and, um, and record that data in those spreadsheets over time, which means you really only have to visit one place to get all of those results rather than kind of flicking through each of the games uh, and their metrics. Does that answer your question? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Um, so one of the other things about the iSports analysis stats is that they're interactive. So if we want to see, for example, the opposition shots at goal, we can just click on that metric. And I'll just mute this. The opposition shots at goal, there are four of them, and here they are. 
And we can see that we're playing clip one, which of course will be the first goal. But what we can also see is any telestration that's been done on this particular event will be displayed. And that telestration lasts for 10 seconds. Once that 10 seconds is up, the video will continue. But what we can do is we can just replay that and pause. So from a coaching perspective, not only do we have the stats to say, these are the events that happened in a game, we also have the ability to draw on the video and point out areas where we can improve, errors that were made, whatever it might be. I mean, that's down to individual coaches to, to decide um, what they're trying to demonstrate or the point that they're trying to make. But you have the ability to draw on the video and you have the ability to draw on the video based on the stats that have been generated from the coding that's been done. Um, any questions with that? Nope, fantastic. So what we'll do is we'll close that down um, and we'll move on to what we call the coach's corner. So this area here, kind of, I'll just pause this video. What we can do here is we can post messages at moments within the video that an event happened in the game. So for example, we've got this home passing uh, message that's been posted. We can see in the video that we are on uh, three seconds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this message and then a number of things will happen. Um, the first thing that will happen is that we'll be taken to the point in the video that this message was posted. So that means players that can sign in, they can see a message or messages from the coach, they can click on that message, and not only can they engage with the message, but they can see the event that happened in the game specific to that message. So I shall click on this message, we get taken to that point in the game, and there's drawings and this message also scrolled to the top of the feed because it's the relevant message. Once our 10 seconds is up, the video carries on playing. Obviously players can engage with these messages. They can reply to these messages. It, it, it creates a kind of forum for a, an open discussion. And as you can see, there was a, a, another message posted there. Um, and it had an associated drawing. So obviously something was being demonstrated there. So the idea here is that as a coach, not only do you have the stats of the game to analyze, to start looking at areas of improvement, strengths and trends, you can combine that with um, messages that are synchronized to moments in the game that events happened that are relevant or important. And you can also um, emphasize the point that you're trying to make with drawings. And your players can engage with that message. I don't know if we've got any messages here where the player has engaged. Yes, so here we've got a message here that's been posted and we've got a player that's responded to that message. So basically what we're looking at here is generating a discussion between players and coaches around the performance or around events that have happened in a game. Um, and this is very important. Um, actually, during the whole COVID period, this, this, this really, really shone because uh, coaches were able to upload previous games that have been played and maintain their uh, coaching with their players, even though they weren't um, able to get on a pitch, the players and the coaches were still able to, to chat to each other and. Uh, and, and have a discussion around performance. Um, are there any questions around that? Fantastic. So one of the things that we can do, if we come down to this analysis, we can see here, we've got our timeline of all of the events that we've tagged. And of course, this is great. And we, as we've seen, we can produce stats from that and so on and so forth. But one of the things we might want to do <clears throat> is we might want to start creating playlists of events that happened in a game that are relevant or important 
and that would speed up the coaching. So as a coach, you might say, okay, if I sign into the event filter, or if I open up the event filter, we're looking here at a total of 800 clips. So if we look at this timeline, we have 800 clips here that have been uh, tagged. So that's 800 events in this game that have been um, that have been added to that timeline. So as a coach, we might say, well, actually, let's look at the home shot at goal. And there are 12 of those. But let's let's narrow that down to on target and blocked. So now we've gone from 800 clips down to seven clips. And um, that might be an area, for example, of discussion or coaching between the coach and the player. And what we can do, we can play those clips and we can sit here and we can just zip through those clips. And uh, it just makes it so much easier to, to drill down to specifics. We all know that, um, you know, uh, if, if you're a coach trying to scrub through a video, trying to find 33 minutes and 34 seconds, or was it 33 minutes and 43 seconds, you're going to lose the attention of your, of your players. By creating these playlists, it's, it's, it's kind of preset before coaching. What you can also do is, let's say we went through these clips and we decided actually out of those seven clips, only three of them are areas of discussion. What we can do is we can say, uh, we can create a bookmark and we can save that. And there are our three clips. So now when our players come and sign into their channel, they can come along and they can say, okay, there are, there are the three clips which are comprised of home shot at goal, on target and blocked. And uh, I don't know what else we got. Let's have a look at this. Oh, there's another three clips. Here we go. We've got this one here, which is made up of 19 clips. The point being that we can bookmark playlists of events based on the analysis and the tagging, the coding that we've done previously, which make it makes it very, very um, much a quicker um, way of drilling down into information in front of your players and, as we've said, pointing out aspects um, that might be areas of improvement or uh, areas of um, strength or even, as we've said previously, trends. Um, does anybody have any questions around any of that? Fantastic. OK, so what we've looked at <clears throat> is the ability to upload a video, to code that video. So we've defined all of the events in that video that we want to use for our um, analysis. We've looked at the stats pages that get generated from that timeline of events. We've looked at how we can drill down into that information, as we've said, to look at strengths, weaknesses and trends, et cetera, et cetera, and how we can use that information over a period of time to look at how the training is either helping or not helping with those um, aspects that we've, we've looked at. And, um, and we've looked at how we can feed back to players and we can feed back to players using drawings and using uh, messages. So the kind of final piece of the puzzle, which I think from a player kind of growth perspective is probably one of the most powerful is what we call our player driven analysis. And what this means is that players can actually analyze their own performance in, in their game. I'm actually going to update some analysis that's already been done here because it just makes it so much easier um, uh, to rather than start from scratch. So what we're looking at here is a very, very simple code window. This is a similar sort of um, uh, code window that we saw previously, but obviously a lot more simple. We, we don't, we're not looking at any kind of um, match events. We're more looking at how the player was uh, in their game. And what we're looking at here is the time that the player who's analyzing their own performance was in possession and thought they did well, the time that they were in possession and didn't think that they did so well, 
the time that they were out possession thought they did well, out of possession didn't think they did so well. Um, we're looking at other moments in the game that might be relevant or important to that player, analysing the performance. And we're looking at any points in the game that that particular player has questions. And if we drill down into this information, or at least into this timeline, we can see, once again, this player has gone through, they've, they've tagged their, their moments in the game. And from a coaching perspective, I can now sign in and I can say, OK, I want to look at all the questions that this player has asked. So I'll play this at double speed so you can see this whipping through. So um, when, it's played the, when it's played the first question, it will go zimming along and on to the second question. And of course, this uh, video is playing exactly the point that the, the player um, had a question and so on and so forth. So as a coach, it makes it very, very easy to look at how your players um, are reflecting on their own performance. Now, from the player's perspective, even a simple, simple code window like this enables your player to really reflect on their performance in the game, how their performance affected the game. Um, they can reflect on the game itself. And we've got a, a, a colleague who um, is doing a PhD in this. And actually what they're doing is they're using cohorts of teams. One cohort of team um, has access to this. The other cohort of teams only has access to, tr to traditional coaching. The, co the, the, the cohort that has access to this, after three months, were able to recall 65% of what they'd learned and what they discussed with the coach through this method, as opposed to 10% from the other cohort that didn't have this um, facility or weren't given this facility and only had the traditional coaching methods. So if you compare 65% of um, being a, players remembering and being able to recall 65% of what they've learned, as opposed to players that were able to remember and recall 10% of what they've learned, this is massive. It's absolutely worth its weight in gold. If your players are on the pitch able to remember that amount of data and that amount of learning, um, obviously that's only going to improve their, their, their performance and only going to help your teams win games and this is what we call our player driven analysis so does anybody have any questions around this i have one at night so players have access to the software and then they can do this or we have so to do them for them they they have access to this they do their own analysis and as a coach you can sign in and um in fact, actually, if I come back to the team channel, I'll show you. So if I'm signed in as a coach, I can actually select my player. So in this case, I'll select player Taylor. And I can see that this player has actually been engaged in all of this analysis somewhere here. Here we go. If I look at this, so this now produces stats around that analysis that that player did on their own performance. So what we're looking at is the possession, time they did well, time they didn't think they did so well, um, out of possession, time they did so well, time they did well and did, times they didn't think they did so well, and um, questions and other. So, you know, important or relevant moments or moments that there were, there, there were questions. And of course, this, these clips, are all playable. So if we wanted to look at the 27 clips that the player thought they did well, we can do that. Obviously, we're not going to go through the 27 clips, but we can if we want to. Just look at the clips. Um, and uh, once again, as a coach, if you're encouraging your players to go through this process, and you as a coach are able to sign in and look at your players' um, analysis of themselves, that is really going to give you an overview of well, your players, their performance, and, and help you to encourage those players to um, 
yeah, to learn more about their performance and more about their game. Does, does that answer your question, Alex? Yes, it's, it's good just to have like everything like on fire. So in the future, when you come back to the same player, you already have an idea of what was the feedback you have in the past and also you have the video. So it's it going to be easy to track the development or the progress of that specific player, assuming he's taking responsibility, no? Absolutely. So, That's absolutely right. And, and so what you're doing is you're, you're building what we term as a passport of your player. And so basically, you know, you, you can have players as young as, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, and you can, you can, you can basically have a, a history of your player's performance all the way up until, well, whatever age, you know, 22, 23, whatever, you know, and, and that is really, really valuable information. Incredibly valuable information. Fernando, do you have a question? Yeah, can um, us as coaches, can we link um, goals or assists or shots on target to a certain player? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Absolutely. So um, one of the things that you can go through, because obviously, you know, with, with this seminar, I, I just want to give you guys an idea of what you can do and how you can improve your team and club performance using um, analysis. But, but um, Fernando, what you can do is the code window that I showed you was a iSports analysis default code window. Mm -hmm. What you can do is you can either take that code window or you can develop your own code window and include um, your players. So absolutely. I mean, not only with regards to attempts on goal, for example, you can say, you know, attempt on goal, successful Fernando, for example. Um, but you can also then associate those players to other events that happened in the game, whether that's penalties or, or whatever. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, perfect. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Um, well, I think that is an overview of the iSports analysis analysis. Um, before we kind of move on, are there any other questions that anybody has? No, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So just as a kind of, um, just as an overview, iSports analysis um, is used by, um, as well as soccer teams, uh, colleges and universities all over the world. It's also used by associations. So we, we've got um, the Scottish Football Association, who now have trained thousands, quite literally thousands of coaches um, in their UEFA um, licenses using iSports analysis. Um, United Soccer Coaches um, is the same. They, they're getting up to thousands. There are just under 2,000 now, I think, coaches that they've trained through their various different um, uh, courses. And, uh, you know, we've got various other associations um, that um, use iSports analysis, not only in soccer, actually, in, in various other sports. Um, using these systems to uh, help um, train and to help with the performance of their athletes and, and their players. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give you an idea that um, you're in good company, really. Um, so because you guys um, have attended this seminar and because of your association with um, with the uh, Arizona Soccer Association. Um, we'd like to make you guys an offer that if you'd like to use iSports analysis, um, we'd very much like to offer you a 10% discount and as well as offering you a 10% discount on our uh, annual um, subscription. Um, we'd also like to offer you uh, a, a two games. We'll analyze fully, analyze two, two of your games two games of your choice for you. We actually have a team of analysts. So if you ever need games analyzing, um, it's, um, we've got a team that can do that for you. We have a very, very quick turnaround time. It's normally eight hours. We say 24, but we cover our backsides and, and say eight. Um, and, um, and also if you do subscribe, we're very, very happy. We've got, um, we've got a, uh, a level one analysis course. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So we'd like to include this into, into, into what we can offer you guys because um, it's all well and good having a package um, to analyze, 
Um, but what we've decided is actually we've put a, a training together that will walk you through um, how to analyze the best practices of analysis, um, things to avoid in analysis. So um, we're very, very happy to, um, to offer you this course um, as well. So uh, if that is of any interest, uh, what you can do is go over to isportsanalysis.com forward slash ASA. And here we have a page describing everything that we've just been through. Um, what we also have here is a what is match analysis, and that will take you through to a PDF uh, that once again will go through this same presentation. And it will also cover doo -doo 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 -doo, at the bottom the um, special offer that we'd like to offer you guys. Um, so are there any questions on any of that? Just one one thing, even now you answer my next question. What you offer here, I, you know, for my experience, is what some coaches or maybe most of us, we are at the beginning a little concerned about how long that will take to download the video, to create the bottom you said, where is action bottom or, des or description bottoms, and then make the analysis and then you know like do the presentation so i think the the course you're offering is very important to see in reality each coach how long that will take to do the game analysis how can do that game analysis the most practical and cannot take too long if, because if it takes too long it's not going to happen so i think those are the steps usually coaches sometimes they don't want to do it because they are scared like i'm not going to do 10 hours of my week this plus session plus preparing for the game is how coaches can get quicker and be more efficient with their time and i know the tool is really important and i think even the course when you teach exactly how to to be more smart with your time is very 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 beneficial well, thank you for that. And that's a great question. So um, actually, um, uploading a video depends on the quality of the video. So uh, some some cameras these days uh, record in high definition, whether that's 720p, 1080p, 4K. And sometimes those files are very, very large. Um, so the upload speed depends on obviously how large the file is and the internet connection that the coach has. Now, the thing is, is if you're downloading a video file from um, say Veo or Pixelot, those files aren't usually too large. <clears throat> They've already been compressed and so they don't take that long to upload. But once your video has been uploaded, if as a coach, you don't have time to analyze the game yourself, you can actually come over to iSports Analysis, sign into your administration dashboard. And come into Manage Session Analysis. And let's say I wanted to, all of these games have been analyzed, but, oh no, here we go, this game here. So if I wanted to book this analysis to be completed by iSports Analysis, I can just click on that button there and I can enter my details um, now of, of things like, you know, uh, home team color, colors, opposition team colors, final scores, any notes um, for the, uh, the analyst. Like I say, we have a team of analysts that can analyze games for you. There is an additional cost to this. As I say, as part of this offer, we are happy to analyze two full games um, for any any all, all of the coaches that, that subscribe um, but what we've done with our analysis is we've kept our prices as low as we possibly can so you know a game to analyze could be as little as 35 dollars per game so if coaches really don't have time and if they really do want to just get those stats um, then they can go through this process book the analysis with us and you know, like I say, we, we say 24 hours, but usually we provide those stats within eight to 12 hours. So um, Alex, does that, does that answer your question? 
Yeah, yeah, because that is usually the challenge we have because uh, some weeks you have more time, some weeks you have less, but at the same time you want to be consistent with your team or your players. So maybe that is your plan B. You, know? you don't have the time to do it, that way you know, contact you and then you can help us with that service. And you know, like it's going to be more consistent for the team, for the coach, and for the development. No? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we get a lot of people that use this system. You know, because they literally don't want to spend an hour and a half or, you know, if they're not used to the if they're not used to coding games and it's an hour and a half game, you know, they might spend two hours coding that game. They might spend a bit longer if it's if it's a really uh, if it's been a complicated game. So, you know, um, if they want to spend thirty five dollars or fifty five dollars is the most they'll spend using one whichever code window that they they choose, um, you know, they can have their analysis you know, like I say, next day by booking our team to, to analyze the game for them. Very good. Well, like I say, if, if everybody, if anybody's interested, if anybody wants to know more, please do go over to isportsanalysis.com forward slash ASA. Um, if you download this PDF here, um you the uh, it, the um the, at the bottom of the pdf it has my email address if anybody has any questions or uh or any comments or um if, if anybody would like to subscribe please do get in touch um obviously more than happy to uh to like i say answer questions and uh and help in any way we can and that very quick i think craig asked in average how long does it take to tack a game I know it uh, depends how many bonus you have and how many descriptors you have, but just like a, if we can have like a range of time. So some of our analysts are so used to analyzing that they don't use the code window, they use hotkeys. So our code windows are all set up so you can use keys on the keyboard. So what they'll do is they'll play the game at one and a half times speed and they'll just have a silicon keyboard that they've laid over their keyboard and they're just pressing keys on their keyboard and that means they can have the whole game fully analyzed in about an hour. That's um, it's, it's pretty good going and it's really impressive to see. It really yeah, is. It's huge because usually for us, it would take like maybe four or five hours, you know. Absolutely. We have to be watching like two or three games and we know already we miss a lot of events, but you know, it is what it is, huh? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, no, our, our analysts are very, very, uh, very, very used to using our system. And, and like I say, they've got all these silicon keyboards that they lay over their keyboard and they just tap away. And it, it just it's magic. It is like watching magic unfold, you know. Um, Craig, did you have a question? No, you didn't. Sorry, because you unmuted. Yeah, that, that, that was my question in regards to how long you take on average to, to tag a match. And I know I've used, uh, you know, uh, uh, software like this before. And when you're first doing it, it does take a lot longer the first time you've done it. Um, and we did the same thing in having the silicon keyboard that you put over to hotkey. And it does, you know, I mean, it all depends how many things you want to tag. So... It really does. It really does. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, okay, so any any final questions or comments before we uh, round it up? No, it doesn't appear so. Okay, so well, thank you all very very much for uh, for attending. It's it's been a real pleasure actually to. Um, walk you through iSports analysis and I hope that um, yeah you've got a bit more of an idea about how you can improve team and club performance using match analysis that was really the objective of this is to just demonstrate that and to demonstrate how you can use iSports analysis um, to to reach those goals. Well, Anadi, again, thank you for your time. I uh, appreciate all the information. Uh, anyone that's interested, please reach out to Anadi and uh, uh, he'll be able to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much, Chris.